everyone, this is Prophetess Kimberly Harvays. I'm the founder of Rejoice Essential Magazines, also Christian Arthur. And today we are continuing our series, The Making of a Prophet. So we have been on Zechariah for the last couple of weeks. You know, maybe you can identify in Zechariah. You know, he wasn't a prophet that worked miracles like Elijah and Jesus Christ. But he was a seer. You know, he saw more. You know, God gave him a special grace to be able to work with angels. Amen. Not everybody has that grace because if some people was, were to see an angel today, they probably will faint and pass out. You know, they probably couldn't handle it. So we have been talking about how uh, God used him to encourage the people of uh, Israel that were in exile. They had just gotten out of uh, Babylonian captivity. So God used Zechariah. You know, to encourage the people, like, hey, you know, repent and turn your heart back into me and I will restore, you know, some things that you lost. So today we're going to talk about restoration. We're going to talk about patience, which is vital for prophets. And we're also going to be talking about pastors. Amen. So, you know, God used Zechariah to prophesy encouragement. You know, prophets, our prophetic words encourages a lot of people. So he used uh, Zechariah to encourage, like, hey, I'm the God that's going to restore you back into myself. And if you really, really obey my commandments, if you obey my commandments, then these blessings will follow. Amen. So we're going to be talking about patience. You know, prophets, you know, you may be in the wilderness. <laughs> you know, maybe I'm preaching to myself today. You know, God has told you certain things that he's going to do for you. He's going to do through you, you know, but we have to wait. We got to have patience. We have to have patience. Do not get ahead of God because when we get ahead of God, we don't have patience to wait for the prophetic uh, word over your life to come to pass or even the prophecies that you have prophesied that God used you to prophesy. You're going to get anxious and the word tells us not to be anxious about anything. You're going to get frustrated, you know, and then you might feel like quitting and throwing in the towel and you know i remember one prophet he got so discouraged you know he was like i'm not gonna say anything i'm not doing this god but then he couldn't even contain himself when the fire when that anointing came upon him it's like god it's like a fire shut up in my bones god i can't contain this thing amen so prophets you must have patience because god can give you a word a prophetic word for somebody but you have to patiently hold that thing in patiently you know carrying that burden of the word until at the right moment god will open up a door for you to release it it's some things that i had to hell i had to hold in hold in you know or sit on that word you know maybe for a month until the lord said okay tell this person some things i haven't even been released to say you know but it all comes down to patience you know so you don't want to get ahead of God. You don't want to release. I keep, I keep talking about this for somebody. You don't want to release a word in the wrong season. So it all comes down to patience. Are you patient? Are you patient, prophet, to be trusted by God, to hold that word in, to hold that revelation in, until at the right time God says, okay, now you can speak. Okay, now you can release this revelation. Or do you just have a big mouth and you just want to spew everything out that God is telling you? No. Some of the things God tells us, they're secret. They're not meant to be shared among everybody. You know, I love the scripture, no cash of pearls among the swine. You know, maybe, uh, for example, God is doing something new in your life or your ministry. And you're so excited. You just feel like telling everybody, but not everybody's going to receive that from you. You know, for example, like, oh my God, God's going to use me to write this book uh, about mathematics and about prophecy and correlate the two. I'm just throwing something out there, random. But, you know, it's before the the time of your, your generation. And people might look at you like you're crazy. You know, so everything's not meant to be shared. So you have to have patience. Maybe God has told you, okay, you know, you're going to go speak to the masses. And you just in this little small country town and you just getting frustrated. She's like, God, I'm so tired of suffering. I'm so tired of being in the wilderness. I'm just ready for my breakthrough, God. I'm ready for something to change. You know, but have patience. You know, even in the midst of the trap, tribulations and the trials, we still need to give God praise. We need to believe God over what we can see 
and uh, you know over the reality of what we're going through we need to really believe him you know that hey one day you are going to speak to the masses hey one day you are going to be financially stable hey one day you are going to be happily married hey one day your your business will be successful hey one day you know you will be preaching and prophesying you know and god will use you to have a a, a voice of influence but right now you're hidden you know, you might be frustrated, you might be discouraged, but you're suffering. But I'm telling you, prophet, all things are working out for your good. All things are working out for your good. So prophets, you must have patience. You don't want to get in front of God. You don't want to mess up uh, what God is doing because you can walk through the wrong door, prophet. You know, I'm, I'm, I want to tell you the truth. Can I be honest with you today? Every opportunity and every door that opens up is not from God. You know, I had to turn down opportunities to speak and to preach because I knew that the person that was trying to give me that platform, they weren't living right. They weren't who they say they were. You know, I'm sorry, but I can't be attached to that. I cannot let no, because guess what? I represent the Lord Jesus Christ. I am his ambassador in Jesus Christ. And, you know, even though I may I haven't been doing this for a long time, I don't want anything to taint the image you know because integrity and character is everything in ministry so i have to turn down some opportunities and that's okay because i know god is going to give me more opportunities you know if if for example prophets we need to pray about everything and pray about everyone amen and i had to learn that lesson the hard way through much tears and suffering and pain amen because the blessings of the lord make you rich and they add no sorrow they have no sorrow attached so you know it's from god if it's a blessing if it doesn't cost you pain and sorrow amen so i remember this man of god or i can't even call him man of god i remember this man you know he has he had a, a title of an apostle no fruits you always go be by Matthew 7. I tell people that all the time. Matthew chapter 7 to judge fruits, you know, of the spirit because it talks about false prophets. You know, false teachers, false prophets, false evangelists, false apostles, false pastors. So you go by the fruit. This man cursed like a sailor. He had a girlfriend on the side. He was married. You know, just a liar. You know, he's a vessel of the enemy to cause drama and deception and just everything everything demonic everything evil you know that's what this man represent so i just kept getting checks by the holy spirit checks in my spirit you know how the holy spirit is warning you checking you like something that right like a vexing like something so you know initially prophet you have to obey god you know but i kept trying to put it off like no I, you know because I'm, I'm the kind of person that's loving and i want to see the good in everybody and try to give somebody a, a multiple chances but god said no so I had to cut it off. Every opportunity prophet, I don't even know where I'm going here. Somebody need to hear this word. It's not from God. Somebody, you know, wants to be like, oh, come to my church. But why why settle or, or why compromise? You know, prophets, you, you shouldn't be brought. Oh my God, it's Holy Spirit speaking. Do not be brought. You know, you need to let God speak through you. You need to let God give you the words to speak at that moment. You know, don't ever, don't ever be brought. Somebody say, you can come to my church, but you can't preach about homosexuality or you can't preach about, you know, anger or lust or whatever or sexual sin. You need to run. Amen. Because you're going to grieve the Holy Spirit. You're going to end up compromising and lose that anointing. Amen. All prophets got to go through that test. Amen. You got to go through that test. But I'm here to tell you that be patient. Wait on God, and God is going to open up to you the right platforms, the right opportunities where you don't have to compromise. This is a word for somebody because somebody is watching me, and you're so anxious. You're so frustrated. You're ready to go out there and speak. You're ready to do things, but you can't take every opportunity. You can't. You cannot. You know, you can't be attached to everybody. I don't witness uh, so called prophets. Uh, trying to connect with everybody and it backfired on them it backfired on them did god tell you to connect with that person or you just wanted to do it because you wanted to self-promote yourself and that is bad prophets patience it all comes down to patience you know let god promote you and stop trying to self-promote yourself amen because you're going to get frustrated and it's not going to work it's going to backfire on you so prophets must have patience amen so well i want to shift you know, I get stirred up about that thing. Amen. 
So we are going to talk about Zechariah. We're going to talk about Zechariah. And I just want to encourage you that God is faithful to his promises. And God does restore. Maybe you're in a season of loss. God does restore. He promised restoration. You know, so God used Zechariah to prophesy in verse uh, chapter number 10. And Zechariah to prophesy, you know, Israel rest restoration to the promised land. No more exile. You know, God will use a prophet, you know, to, to prophesy restoration in the people of God's life. Amen. And that word is going to bring life and encouragement unto them. So, you know, um, God used Zechariah to uh, promise and prophesy restoration, you know, that Judah and Israel will be restored, you know. So I love verse number one. I love verse number one. I want to read it to you guys. You know, Zechariah 10 verse one. This is a great promise. This is a great promise to, um, you know, bring it back unto God. Amen. You may be in a desert place right now, wilderness season, but God promises in verse number one to send the latter rain, the rain of blessing. You, you, you may feel like your brook is being dried up and you may want some restoration. You want the blessing of the Lord, the rain on those dry places. So it says, ask the Lord, you know, for rain during the springtime, the latter rains. Ask the Lord for latter rains. You know, he, he's, the, he's the God, he's the Lord that's going to make the storm clouds and he's going to send the showers, he's going to send the, the latter rains and give everyone green uh, plants in their field, you know, the, the grain in their field. Amen. So that's a great promise. So prophets, we can ask the Lord for the latter rain. We can ask him, you know, say, God, you're so faithful, God. Lord, you, you, you use me all the time to prophesy restoration. Lord God, so I, I receive in advance, God, my restoration. Amen. God, I receive in advance my latter rain. Amen. Prophets, you know, sometimes God will get you in that hard place, that desert place, and he wants to use your mouth, prophet, and say, okay, and I want you to prophesy your way out of this desert. I want you to prophesy your way out of this wilderness. Amen. Every prophet has to go through that. Amen. I'm, I'm telling you, people of God, I, I'm telling you, he did it to Ezekiel. You have to prophesy uh, flesh on some dry bones, you know, and I'm telling you, God is waiting on you, prophet, to open up your mouth and prophesy. Amen. That's a test. And the reason why you have to go through that, I want to encourage somebody because number one, that wilderness is your training ground. And, you know, you want to be encouraged. God wants to increase your faith to see the uh, prophetic manifestations of your own words. Amen. So you're going to have to prophesy your way out of your own situations at times you're going to, have to be placed in that, that that land you know and you got to get up and it's going to build that faith in you and say in the name of jesus i prophesy i'm coming out the wilderness i'm coming out the valley place i decree and i declare and i command you know whatever the situation is i, I command a, a, a debt elimination i command restoration in my life whatever it is prophet you got to go through that testing you got to go through that testing and when you pass that test Amen. When you pass that test, so many doors are going to open up for you. So many platforms are going to open up for you. You know, because you have, first of all, God had to try and test your patience. And then he had to put you in a, a, a circumstance, a, a difficult cir circumstance. So you're like, okay, hmm. Yeah, they're my prophet. But let's see if they really believe. Let's see. Hmm. Can they really prophesy in their finances? Can they really prophesy a breakthrough in their own life? They do it for everybody else. But let me, let me see. Let me test them to see if they really believe, you know, thus said the Lord. Prophet. Amen. So I hope this is encouraging somebody. So verse number four and five. Let me go down to verse number four and five uh, in uh, Zechariah. So verse number four, you know, is a lot of. Uh, this is really, really deep, these chapters. has a lot of symbolism. And prophets, we have to know, like, different symbolisms and patterns in the word. So, um, verse number four, this really stood out to me. You know, I, I challenge you, you know, to read Zechariah 10 and 11. Study these chapters. Amen? So, it said, from Judah, him, will come the cornerstone. What is the cornerstone? It symbolizes strength. We know Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. You know, we get st our strength in him. You know, it's symbolized, cornerstone symbolizes stability. You know, that cornerstone is the strongest place in the building. Amen. So cornerstone symbolizes strength. It symbolizes stability. You know, it's coupled, coupled with beauty and, and uh, honor. Amen. So in Jesus Christ comes our strength, our stability. Even, you know, you may be broken. You may have had a horrible past. Maybe you used to be a prostitute. 
I used to be a stripper, but with the grace of God, the glory of God on my life, you know, the anointing makes me extra beautiful, huh? You know, and uh, same for you. You may used to be a drug dealer or whatever, you know, a crackhead. And, and the glory of God on your life shined you up, polished you up, purified you, refined you. So now you're looking good, right? So it's called, the glory and the grace of God is coupled with uh, beauty and honor. That's awesome, right? All right, so let's go back to our symbolism in chapter 4. Excuse me, verse 4. And it talks about um, and the tag, uh, tent peg. The tent peg, you know, that's, that symbolizes permanence and endurance. You know, sometimes prophets, we go through the, the worst the worst trials and tribulations. If you're like giving up. You're like, dang, God, I'm always going through something. But it keeps us on our face, prophets. It keeps us close to the Father. Amen. So that pit tag or that tent peg, I'm saying it wrong. The tent peg, you know, it's permanence. Like God knows what he's doing. He began a good work in you. He's going to finish that work. Amen. And bring it unto completion. And he's also going to give you endurance. You know, you may have obeyed God and it seemed like everything has went wrong. But I want to encourage you, prophets, that God is going to give you strength and he's ordering your footsteps. If you just submit, have patience and trust him. I feel the anointing on this word, my God. Oh, hallelujah. And it talks about the battle bow. The battle bow, you know, is strength necessary for military conquest. Maybe you're in spiritual warfare right now. It seems like all hell or demonic forces are attacking you. You know, maybe because you got a prophetic word or you spoke something, you set somebody free, and now this backlash and retaliation is hitting your life. But I'm telling you, you know, God is going to use you as his battle axe. He is training you up in his, his war. You know, I'm telling you, prophets, we, we, we face a lot of warfare. You got the name prophet on your name. Prophet is in front of your name. So guess what? You're going to face some prophetic demons. Amen. So these people out here, they're like, I want to be a prophet. I want to be a prophetess. Okay, we're going to be facing prophet level demons in the rank of the spirit. Amen. You gotta, you gotta go. You're gonna go through warfare. Amen. You know, you know how many witches try to come on the periscopes I do, and and warlocks have inboxed me on periscope, and people operating in divination, and the Holy Spirit said that's a witch. So I gotta believe what I hear versus what I see in the natural. I'm like, okay. And then you know how the people try to do witchcraft on me. I'm, I remember, I never forget. I'm walking through my home and I just feel something stabbing me. Like, choo, choo, like nah, it's just like in the realm of the spirit, you know, because like prophets, you have a, a heightened spiritual awareness. Like you're really super sensitive to the spirit realm. So I was like, ah, oh, I was like, what is this? God put something stabbing me. Holy Spirit spoke and said, that's witchcraft. So from this moment on, if I ever if I feel that again, I know what to pray against, you know. So I begin to break witchcraft and send that stuff back to sender in Jesus' name. So if you put a name prophet, prophetess on your name, you're gonna be going through some warfare. Amen. But be encouraged. God has equipped you, God has anointed you for that. Amen. So no weapon formed against you, prophet, will prosper. Amen. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Amen. So the next thing um it says, Oh my God, hallelujah. So let, let me switch to chapter five. Let me switch to chapter five. Excuse me. I keep saying chapter five. Let me switch to verse five. Zechariah 10 verse five. And it talks about, uh, you know, God has promised us def defeat for our enemies. So it, don't mess, it doesn't matter what witch, what warlock, what wizard, what diviner, what sorcerer, whatever. You know, try to come against you for doing the will of God or try to stop, you know, God's promises in your life. God has promised us, you know, victory. Our enemies are defeated. Beat it. I'm, I'm here to tell you, you know, God, I stand on this vision. You may have heard me say it a thousand times. You know, God told me the first vision I had. He said, daughter, as long as you stay in the spirit, I will release my flaming arrows against your enemies. So, you know, I always try to be in a posture, you know, and, 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 and try to dwell in a secret place because that is my that's my safety place. That's my safety place. You know, prophets, you can feel when people praying against you, you can feel that thing. Hey, Amen. I don't know about you, but I can feel it. So that's what I'm on my face. I'm like, I don't know who's speaking against me or who's praying against me, but I send that stuff back to Cinder in Jesus' name because it literally feels like knives stabbing me. I'm like, what is this, Lord? You know, I, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Maybe, you, maybe you're being attacked by witchcraft. Father God, send forth the fire, God, to break every demonic witchcraft attack against our lives in Jesus' name. And I send that back to sinner right now in Jesus' name. And I plead the blood of Jesus upon us in Jesus' name. Remember, the blood still works. 
The blood of Jesus is powerful. My God. I'm telling you, even death couldn't even stand the blood. I'm telling you, remember Passover? They put the blood, it was symbolic of Jesus Christ's blood. They put the blood on the doorpost and death had to pass by it. You know, that's powerful. Are you receiving, are you receiving this revelation? All right, so let me skip down to uh, chapter 11. Chapter 11, we're going to talk about pastors now. You know, I want to give you some biblical examples that prophets, you know, we do a lot of things. You know, maybe God will give you prophet uh, a grace to pastor. God has not given me that grace. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, you know, I, I'm not the kind of prophet that's going to hold your hand. You know, I have people inboxing me. You know, sometimes it's like I feel sad today. Maybe the first time I'll be a little, you know, nice. But then the second or third time, no, I'm be like, where's your faith? You know, I, I'm not going to. No, I'm not going to hold your hand. I'm not going to handicap you because if I'm up here I'm like, oh, that's handicapping you. You know, what What good is that going to come out of that? You know, so I know I don't have the grace to be a pastor. I'm, I'm just being honest. But, you know, maybe God has given you profit that certain grace to pastor. Right. So this I'm going to give you some biblical, um, you know, in Zechariah 11, you know, Zechariah had to fulfill the role as a shepherd or a pastor. You know, even though he knew that uh, they were headed for slaughter, they were headed for destruction. But because he obeyed God, he was such submitted to God. God said, I want you to pastor. You know, I want you to feed my flock or feed this flock. And he, he had to do it. And that was just symbolic of uh, Jesus Christ, you know, because uh, Jesus Christ, you know, he was in all the fivefold offices. He was the chief apostle, chief prophet. You know, I don't care what I don't care what man-made titles they have. No, Jesus Christ was the chief apostle, the chief prophet, the chief evangelist, the chief teacher, and the chief pastor. You know, maybe this is stepping on somebody's toes, but we need to go ahead somewhere with all these titles. Amen. Stop trying to think more highly of yourself than what you are. Amen. So let me let me leave that alone. You know, maybe it's cutting off this broadcast right now, but I'm just being real. You know, come on, people. We gotta do better. Cause okay, so. Mm, Jesus, I could go on and on about that, but I'm going to leave that alone. So, uh, in Zechariah 11, you know, it talks about the desolation of Israel or abandonment of Israel. Maybe you feel desolated or abandoned prophet, but there's hope. There's hope. And maybe God has given you the grace to pastor, you know. So, in the first few verses in Zechariah 11, we see some shepherds crying out, you know, and they were well in, like, deep distress. Because their lands were ruined. You know, I'm here to tell you, you know, God, and this is a prophetic word. I feel this uh, prophetic coming on me right now. You know, you're going to see a lot of leaders get replaced. That they started off right, but they're not in God's will anymore. We're going to see uh, preachers dropping dead behind the pulpit. You know, this is some of the things Holy Spirit told me my personal time. Amen. Spending time with him. You know, we're going to see some of these things. You know, they're going to be willing. And... Uh, God is going to raise up people he can trust. Amen. So let me not go into that. But in verse number four, you know, Zechariah was commanded to be a pastor. And like I told you, if you follow this series from the day one, when I first started talking about Zechariah, he was a prophet and he was a priest. He had a priesthood lineage. Um, he was the son of Bacariah, the son of Ido, you know, the tribe of the Levites. So we see confirmation that he was a priest. He, he had that pastoral anointing. So, you know, he had, he was commanded to feed the flock, you know, even though they were destined for slaughter, you know. So what is a shepherd? You know, and a shepherd, if you call to be a pastor, that is not something you take lightly. Because God says in his word, he gets prophetic woes over and over and over again. And we're going to get to that. You know, uh, shepherds, they are supposed to guide the sheep and protect the sheep amen you're supposed to guide the sheep protect the sheep just think about it in like the biblical days you know they have a staff and this big bad wolf is trying to come along and get the sheep okay you're supposed to protect them like pow like take your staff and pile you know the wolf on the head like get out of here leave my sheep alone you know that's what a shepherd does so if you have that grace when you're going to go all out for, for your sheep, for, for the members, if you're called the pastor, prophet, you know, and you're supposed to guide as well, you know, for example, you know, prophets, we know, like, uh, 
I'm gonna hold my hand up. We are this, we are the pointer finger on the fivefold. You know, you saw the little hand diagram. You know, um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google it. Fivefold offices, the hand diagram will pop up. So prophets guide and also shepherds they're supposed to guide as well for you know to be a pastor for for their flock amen so in verse number 12 let me skip down in verse number 12 uh zachariah 11 let's go down to verse number 12 you know uh this is prophetic remember i i told you that zachariah prophesied uh jesus christ betrayal by judas in this verse, it talks about 30 pieces of silver. And we know that 30 pieces of silver is what Judas betrayed Jesus over. You know, and he didn't even want it. And then he tried to return that 30 pieces of silver to back to the scribes and Pharisees. They didn't even take that money because they knew that was blood money. So I think they, I want to say they buried that money in the field where he hung himself. Judas hung himself at. But to make a long story short, you know, this is prophetic. Sometimes prophets god will use us to prophesy things that don't even make sense you know are symbolic you know like why am i talking about you know bridges and stuff like that knowing goodwill maybe five years later uh, a major bridge is about to collapse or something you know or just i'm just throwing something out there all right so that is evidence of you know the 30 pieces of silver like judas betrayed jesus christ all right all right, so let's so skip down to verse number 17. Let me try to get back on track about pastoring, how prophets can do both. You know, you can, you could be a pastor and a prophet. You know, you could be a prophet and a teacher. You could be a prophet and an evangelist. You know, um, you can act as both if God has given you that grace, and that's okay. That's okay. You know, you know, you're going to know if God gives you that, gives you that grace because he's going to speak to you about it. He's going to confirm it. And he's probably going to send another prophet to bring confirmation. And you're going to like doing it as well. Amen. And he's going to give you a special anointing to pastor. Because when, you, when you're a pastor, you got to have patience. You know, a lot of prophets, they don't like to listen. You know, for example, because you already know that you already know what, what it is. For example, for me, like somebody come to me and it's like diagnostic, diagnostics. Like you just go by with the Holy Spirit. You don't want to hear the life story, all the whole story. Somebody can talk for like 30 minutes. You're like, oh, God already told me that you're discouraged about finances. Boom. Problem solved. And he says he's going to bless your finances, you know, in the next 30 days, blah, blah, blah. You don't want to hear a whole life story about, oh, yeah, yeah, I lost my finances because I went through a bad divorce. And then I, I moved in with my mama and she was being mean to me. Then my cousins were being mean to me. Then I went to my job and they was trying to come against me. And this, you know, that story can go on forever. You know, I'm not trying to say I don't have compassion. I, I do. I'm just saying. So, like, if you're called to be a pastor, uh, you're going to have to have patience with the people and really, really listen you know, and, you know, that's what that's a, a job of a pastor as well. They have that grace to listen and have compassion on the people, like an extra, extra dose of that. To be able to listen and be able to hold their hand and to guide them and lead them like, it's okay. You know, so that's why a lot of prophets come off as nonchalant or uh, not compassionate. But we are, you know, we are. But God hasn't given us some of the, that grace. You know, I, for me, I'm being honest, I'm, I'm talking about myself. I don't have the grace. I, I get vexed a lot. I can't have everybody in my ear. I can't have everybody dumping on me because I get vexed. And I'm so sensitive to, you know, the realm of the spirit. I'm picking up everything. You know, when somebody's crying, I want to cry. When I'm in my prayer time, I'm crying for somebody. I don't even know, but, but the Lord's let me feel their pain. So, I, I, you know, I can't have everybody. I'm depressed. I'm suicidal. Okay, you're suicidal, but you're not going to kill yourself. You know, I rebuked it off you in Jesus' name, and I'm going to keep it moving. You know, and I'm going to trust that God's going to honor my prayer and, and, and keep you. Amen? So, I don't know where I'm going here, but let me let me hurry up. So, in uh, uh, verse 17, it gives a prophetic woe. It gives a prophetic woe for for the shepherds that takes takes the job lightly, you know, that misuse and mishandle the office of being a, the, the office of a pastor. And it says, how terrible it will be to you. How, whoa, 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 how useless, you know, how worthless shepherd who abandoned the flock. You know, it said a sword will strike his arm and his right eye. His right arm and his right eye. Pay attention to that. So the arm symbolizes, uh, you know, strength to protect the sheep. You know, it's going to wither away. This is prophetic. And his right eye, you know, is supposed to use to guide, you know, um, to watch over the sheep. 
So it's a prophetic warning. So if you are called to be a pastor prophet, you can't take that for granted. You can't take that for granted. You got to do your job seriously. And Ezekiel gives another prophetic woe. And it talks about woe to the shepherds who feed themselves and not the flock. How many pa how many pastors have you seen that, you know, they're driving these expensive cars and, and they're, they're, they're members, they're, they're struggling and they're homeless. They, for example, I'm not talking about uh, God doesn't want you in a hoopty. That's, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about these ministries. They don't have no kind of outreach. They don't have no kind of homeless uh, ministry or nothing for the homeless or their members or no kind of benevolence fund. But there you are. You're wearing these designer suits and you're not giving anything unto the people that need help. You know, or they're all about themselves and not about their members. You know, they're just doing it for a paycheck. No, God sees your motives. God sees what's in your heart. You got to do it because you're called to it. You got to do it because that's what God called you to do and you love it. Amen. You can't do it for the money because sometimes, you know, you might not get everything that the money that you're believing God for. All right. You might not get the money that you're believing God for. So make sure your motives are pure profit, especially if you're called the pastor. You know, God might send you to start a little church. And, you know, if you're not called for, you're going to give up. You're going to give up. You're be like, man, ain't no money in here. I'm going to go get a secular job and begin to work and forget ministry, forget pastoring. You know, and or you might misuse it and mishandle it and manipulate the people because your motives aren't right. So God gives a prophetic woe in his word, you know, so you don't want to play with God. You know, being a pastor, you know, is an important job. You know, even a prophet is important. Amen. So that's all I have today for the making of the prophets. I will see you guys next week. God bless.